Welcome everybody to this new webcast and webcast series from Bramasol. Today we are going to talk again about the digital solutions economies, but we're going to apply that to various industries. I am really pleased to have Bramasol CEO Dave Fellers here with me because for the past year, Dave has been publishing a very well received series of blog posts on exactly this topic about DSE and how it impacts across a number of industries. Dave, it is great to have you here. Thank you, John. It's great to be here. Before we dive into the specific industries, how about we provide a big picture overview on the digital solutions economy and its implications from a broad perspective? Absolutely. You know, our audience has probably heard the terms like solutions economy and subscription economy, uh, but these really don't capture either the breadth of industry applications that are being uh, disrupted or the full scope of related process changes that are needed to create dynamically scalable and manageable systems for market success. Even as the early waves of customer driven digital disruption have moved across the B2C consumer space, some players continue calling it the subscription economy, but there's really much more to it than just offering subscriptions. And this is especially true in the B2B and B2B to C companies that are jumping in to offer an increasingly wide array of digitally disruptive business models. Some examples of the range of these applications in the digital solutions economy include a B2C customer consumer offerings where the customer buys a subscription, uh, such as signing up for recurring deliveries of a specific product uh, or service. Really, this is our first wave of change. B2C and B2B models, where the customer buys a product with an associated subscription for related services. Let's say, for example, Peloton, where you have home exercise equipment, but you get key coaching sessions uh, or a piece of production floor equipment with associated supplies. This is sort of that second wave of change. B2B and B2C offerings, where the entire customer or client's experience is addressed with bundles of related products and services, such as equipment purchase or lease that includes ancillary deliverables, such as utilization management, rights to upgrade, consulting support, usage analytics, etc. This is kind of the third wave of, Dave, what we're seeing here. Thanks, John. Since the DSC has lots more aspects beyond simply managing subscriptions, let's take a look at how all the pieces fit together. Why don't you walk us through that? Well, to do. Well, this slide illustrates the six key elements that make up the end to end order to cash to compliance or record process that companies in virtually any industry need to consider as they look at moving into the DSE offerings. The first element includes customer engagement. How does the customer want to interact with you on a regular basis? How will you capture all of those orders uh, and manage them, creating a dynamic environment that's driven by the customer? Delivery and fulfillment. Uh, allowing the customer uh, within reason to choose how, when, and where they want things delivered. Billing and invoicing, uh, not just, Dave, simply collecting all of the invoices into one place, but having the billing and invoicing matching what your needs are. For example, one of our customers had um, capital equipment they bought, but then overages in terms of rentals. Payments and collections. Um, really, you know, all of these subscriptions are great, um, but if you can't collect the money, uh, all of it's interesting, but not very. So we talk about payments and collections. Uh, and by the way, as a side, check out a recent um, video, we, a video and audio we did about that. Um, we have RevRec, um, and certainly that is the heart of uh, our business and what we love about this whole thing. But you know, really focusing in on what are the implications to revenue recognition of these various models and how do they integrate end to end? And of course, at the end of the day, you need a solid finance foundation, including cash and treasury, embedded analytics, and future-proof infrastructures. Well, that's very important information. And you know, John, as a long-term co-innovator with SAP, the Bramsall team has synthesized a disciplined but highly flexible methodology for addressing these multifaceted pieces of the puzzle which enables us to leverage SAP solutions such as BRIM, the Billing and Revenue Innovation Management Portfolio, 
along with compliance solutions like the SAP Revenue Accounting and Reporting Tool, and you alluded to that, and SAP Analytics Cloud and other S4 HANA enabled solutions. It's also important to point out that we've built in the flexibility to provide any or of all of these pieces shown in the diagram while enabling companies to integrate any legacy applications such as CRM or online order processing systems, meaning you can fit in systems you rely on within the SAP solution mm -hmm. set. This means companies can quickly get up and running with the new DSC offerings while being assured of the long-term scalability and adaptability along with the visibility and agility for ongoing optimization. Right. Oh, that's great. And you know, and I know that we offer this both in any platform environment, whether it's the quote unquote public cloud uh, or when companies want to host their own uh, solutions. So that is great. Um, how about we dive into some of the more specific industries uh, that you've addressed in your blog post, Dave? The digital solutions economy in the media and entertainment industry is you know, one of the compelling stories in this evolution and transformation. But there are some key challenges that this uh, industry space uh, faces, such as navigating huge changes in the competitive landscape itself, driving new subscriber growth while reducing subscriber churn, kind of dealing with both ends of that spectrum, boosting revenues with compelling new advertising initiatives, continually having to offer fresh content while controlling the spiraling production costs, and dealing with increasingly complex cross-licensing relationships as these different media companies interact and interoperate with each other. At Bramasol, we have a long history of working with leading media companies such as Apple, Discovery, Google, Disney, AT&T, and others. In many cases, these working relationships started with helping companies comply with the increasingly complex revenue recognition and compliance issues using applications such as the SAP Revenue Accounting and Reporting Tool. Uh, as back-end processes and relationship management issues for the digital solutions economy have become more important, Bramasol's leadership in tailoring SAP BRIM to specific customer requirements is helping our clients adapt to the dynamically changing media business landscape. The flexibility to integrate BRIM portfolio applications with legacy customer-facing subscription processes is also very helpful to support the integration of M&A acquired entities as well as complex cross-licensing arrangements. Now that is so true as we see all of this evolve and of course the revenue sharing just gets bigger and bigger as we see Apple, Amazon and others um, just broadening their portfolios and crossing lines very much. But so the focus on, on implementation flexibility should help media companies address their immediate needs to adopt um, disruptive challenges. But what about the longer terms? Right. Well, looking ahead with the progression of the digital transformation processes, the combination of SAP Analytics Cloud and SAP S4 HANA will enable better visibility across the whole end to end process, along with a unified single source of the truth for management of the disparate elements, scaling to meet the demand, and optimizing the profitability for streaming media offerings. That's great. Let, let's talk, Dave, for a moment about DSE, Digital Solutions Economy in the Semiconductor Industry. The, the Digital Solutions Economy in the Semiconductor Industry is an extremely compelling area. Um, the Semiconductor Industry is known for leading the way in innovation and change, but there's a lot of challenges that come with that. So the global semiconductor supply chain disruptions and chip shortages are certainly something all over the news and leading to lots of uh, changes from governmental policy, investment, and other things. Uh, so the, that's a big issue. Geopolitical concerns over where these semiconductor manufacturing is located, moving it out of certain parts of the world to other parts, uh, a big issue. Um, however, there's a long capital investment cycle for creating new chip boundaries. Uh, the intellectual property protection has been a concern for decades. Um, there are many software licensing uh, opportunities and challenges to address uh, multi-company relationships for chip design, as you can imagine, it's a whole, a whole ecosystem in itself for the design, the manufacturing, and, and the software applications uh, are very complex. And then all of this is uh, burdened by the long lead times for existing chips and even longer startup timeframes for new designs. So a lot of big issues 
uh, that face the semiconductor industry when they look at the digital uh, solution approach. Uh, according to a recent survey of companies throughout the semiconductor ecosystem, nearly half of all of them plan to introduce usage, subscription, or outcomes-based revenue models. Even hardware companies, such as those producing chips and equipment, are forging paths towards innovative new models. With a long history of serving the needs of key players across the whole semiconductor ecosystem, such as NVIDIA, Mentor Graphics, KLA 10 Core, IBM, and others, Bramasil is already helping many companies bring a holistic digital transformation approach to improving both their intercompany collaborations and their bottom line business results. For example, bundling of chips, software, and service offerings that involve multiple companies often entail complex revenue recognition and compliance issues, and semiconductor equipment makers offering new usage-based models can benefit from billing and revenue innovation solutions. As new chip foundries are being planned and built, advanced equipment leasing solutions also come into play. In addition, from an overall perspective, the forward path to SAP S4HANA provides a solid roadmap for seamless meshing of all these specific line of business capabilities within a high performance in-memory architecture that assures both scalability and future-proof extensibility. Wow, Dave, you know, there's a lot there uh, to digest. I mean, it's the the amount of change there in uh, semiconductor business is amazing. And of course, you mentioned NVIDIA, one of our long-term customers, uh, who is offering all of those things as they continue their journey into autonomous vehicles and become the engines that drive that. So we can see how the BRIM and RevRec coming together is really influencing uh, how these businesses are able to scale and integrate. You know, another piece that Dave, you and I have gotten involved in uh, over the past few years and more recently um, with a number of different railroad, um, shipping, uh, ocean going companies is the transportation sector. A lot of change there too. How is that, how is that being manifest in what we're seeing from a digital solutions economy perspective? Well, the transportation industry in general is certainly an industry all of us as consumers are feeling uh, the, our dependency on them when it comes to shortages of the goods and materials that we rely on or expect to see. Uh, so as, as there's a transformation to the digital solutions economy, uh, transportation companies face these kinds of challenges. Of course, the supply chain inefficiencies were exposed by the pandemic, and there are the shifts in consumer buying behavior that were both already underway and, and further in, uh, influenced by the pandemic. That last mile delivery has become a critical cost factor as retail sales shift from in stores to online. Autonomously driven vehicles are emerging for both commercial and consumer markets are taking shape. Public transportation systems need to improve accessibility and cost of ridership. Commercial trucking fleet management is facing driver shortages and looking at tech alternatives. And then railway freight services are turning to new technologies for tracking, for improving efficiency and flexibility. As subscription-based services become more prevalent in the transportation sector, companies are turning their attention to how holistic DSE methodologies can help them better serve their customers while also keeping back-end processes adaptable, scalable, efficient, and compliant. Here again, solutions like SAP BRIM enable transportation companies to smoothly transition from their conventional business models to, to new subscription-based offerings. Other related solutions in the SAP ecosystem are key for transportation companies making the transition to these new business models. For example, SAP revenue accounting and reporting streamlines and simplifies accounting and reporting of complex revenue streams under the ASC 606 or IFRS 15 rules. And SAP contract and lease management, uh, CLM provides asset management and accounting compliance for other regulations, ASC 842 and IFRS 16. The bottom line for virtually all DSE offerings in the transportation sector is the goal of providing customers with a high value by putting them in charge and giving them choices that foster loyalty and provide upsell opportunities. However, equally important for success is the need to implement robust, holistic backend DSE systems that transparently handle all the fulfillment, accounting, and compliance issues required for overall business success. Wow, 
that's a lot in there. Um, you know, transportation obviously is evolving a lot. I think the autonomous vehicles are huge and we'll see a lot of innovation in spaces by offered by companies we deal with, such as Waymo. Um, also in the shipping industry, what we're starting to see is companies um, who traditionally started with a very simple methodology to comply with the regulations are now learning uh, that revenue accounting and all of the DSE can provide insights and solutions that they didn't have before aligning to our idea of com of the idea of comply, optimize and transform. So we will expect to continue to see evolution in this space at an accelerating pace. Absolutely. Thanks, John. Medical device industry. Uh, wow, let's dig into that one because I know as I'm getting older, this is becoming a, a big area for me. But you know, medical device really is also a space where we're seeing tremendous amount of uh, innovation in places that you wouldn't expect. Maybe you can share with us some of the challenges and things that Bramasol is doing there. Yeah, the medical device industry, obviously, as you stated, it's a very significant player in people's personal lives as uh, when it comes to health. So, but there are key challenges that uh, medical device makers face as they look at um, the different elements of a digital based digital solution economy based formula. Uh, traditional capital equipment procurement cycles have become too long and cumbersome uh, when you think about this kind of transformation. Uh, unanticipated disruptions such as that caused by COVID have exposed the need for greater agility. Um, and we have this new trend of value-based insurance reimbursements that are driving the need to justify equipment and other devices according to the outcomes and utilization rather than just allocating capital acquisition costs. And that's a big change for the industry. Market dynamics and uncertainties are making revenues less predictable for med tech manufacturers, thereby impairing forecasting and planning processes. And the shift from CapEx uh, purchase models to subscription-based offerings requires medical device manufacturers to adapt their revenue recognition and reporting systems to assure compliance. The digital solutions economy applications, along with the overall digital transformation strategies, will play key roles in helping companies in the med tech sector navigate these challenges, and that's, that's helpful and that's important. Solutions such as SAP BRIM enable medical device makers to smoothly transition from their equipment sales models to new subscription-based DSE offerings. Because BRIM supports a holistic approach that seamlessly interfaces with third-party or legacy customer engagement systems on the front end, and also integrates directly with payments, collections, and revenue compliance on the back end, um, that provides uh, needed um, capabilities for companies. Other related solutions in the SAP ecosystem are key to helping medical device companies make the transition to see to these new business models. Here again, SAP revenue accounting reporting, SAP contract life cycle management, streamline and simplify accounting and reporting of complex revenue streams under the ASC 606, IFRS 15 rules, as well as the asset management and accounting under the ASC 842 and IFRS 16. So both uh, domestic and international standards are, are met. Bramasol clients such as Hillrom is a prime example of how new subscription-based models can be successful in the medical devices sector. Uh, Hillrom Smart Care service provides hospitals and clinics with turnkey management of their patient care equipment, such as beds, stretchers, diagnostic systems, test devices, consumables, etc., to optimize readiness, availability, usage levels, locations, maintenance, and remote device management. As the overall healthcare landscape continues to change, the medical device sector in particular must cope with the need for new DSC subscription-based models to give health providers better ways to procure needed systems while also optimizing the ongoing usage and management of these devices. Uh, through this, through meeting these challenges, uh, medical device makers will you know, work to supply their mm -hmm. their their customers, their direct and indirect customers, and ultimately the what will end up being patients with uh, better better care, better services, uh, for better health outcomes. Absolutely, and and continued evolution of this model within the delivery of care, whether it's through subscriptions, concierge services, uh, and all of that has been a tremendous uh, change. And as we look at some of our customers, in addition to Hillrom, such as uh, Terumo and uh, Amgen and others, as we see those evolutions, um, will certainly continue to push at the forefront. 
Dave, let's talk for a moment about something near and dear to all of our hearts as we watch what's going on in the world today, the energy sector. Um, tremendous amount of change in this sector as we see more uh, moves away from fossil fuels and talking about um, electronic EVs, electric vehicles, and, and solar and all of that. What are some of the key challenges um, you're seeing here? John, absolutely. The, the energy sector is the, is the epicenter of both um, hanging on to the past and, and evolving to the future as we try to meet the needs of the planet. Um, but we feel the impacts of our current dependency. Um, but this industry is looking in a big way at, new, at a new future, uh, which will be very much driven by digital solutions uh, as the digital solutions economy takes shape. But they cannot uh, ignore some of the big challenges they face, such as managing the transition itself from fossil fuels to sustainable energy sources, which actually, you know, obviously is a, um, a, ma a massive survival um, issue for some companies that may not have a business in the future if they can't figure out that transition, and obviously an opportunity for a lot of new businesses to come into existence as, as has been happening. The scaling up and integrating uh, of more renewable energy into business models, just businesses finding ways to leverage and take advantage of as a part of their normal business operations. Uh, the disciplined capital planning to support that transition of energy sources. Uh, and that's an, a long-term enormous challenge as there's just not enough of new energy to replace old energy yet. And it needs that process needs to change. It'll take time and, and, and it'll be very complicated and very involved. The increasingly complex partnering scenarios between energy producers, supply chains, distribution networks, and customer facing delivery systems, you know, it also becomes much more complicated um in general in the energy sector and in with these transitions um and within this and any any industry in this kind of massive change you're always going to have a lot of uh, uh mergers and acquisitions going on and integrating those m a deals aimed at diversifying a company's energy offerings as one of their ways to expand uh is a, a continuous challenge uh, of how to fit that in um, and then within all of that, implementing the digital transformation approach to improve the end-to-end -end efficiency, uh, traceability, visibility, and management of energy infrastructures is critical. And then an issue that is very critical in this space is complying with many evolving regulatory requirements uh, on a variety of levels, including for ESG and carbon accounting. Uh, these are two uh, areas that will cross into many other industries as well, but the energy sector is probably the front and center for that one. Dave, that's a lot of challenges that are out there. How How is Bramasol able to and, and going about addressing all of these challenges for this industry? The digital solutions economy applications exist uh, to help meet these challenges and, and they support the overall digital transformation strategy changes, um, including playing key roles in helping companies in the energy sector navigate those challenges just mentioned. Uh, for example, the increasing emphasis on agile partnering scenarios between companies in the end-to-end -end energy generation and delivery infrastructure will require DSC uh, software solutions that can dynamically adapt to shifts in usage levels, revenue sharing, and contract change management. SAP solutions such as Brim enable companies to integrate new energy sources while building on their legacy systems and balancing the transition from fossil fuels. On the consumer facing side, DSC solutions such as Broom will also be critical for the traditional oil and gas retail companies, such as for gas station networks, as they navigate the shift away from fossil fuels and install electric vehicle charging systems or EV systems. The shift to these EV charging systems will require new contractual relationships with electric utilities and charging system providers. Incentive and loyalty programs will be key factors for gas stations to optimize consumer spending, both for charging and for other on-site products and services that these kinds of uh, gas station businesses will, have, will evolve into as they transition away from fossil fuels. From a macro perspective, the ability of solutions such as Brim to adapt agnostically to disparate legacy billing and consumer facing systems will also be key to supporting a smooth transition for companies in the energy sector, uh, where there are many, many different systems in use across these very large and complex organizations. 
For example, again, heightened uh, M&A activity, mergers and acquisitions will mean companies need to accommodate and integrate a variety of different systems and revenue streams while also being able to see and manage the full end-to-end -end picture. In addition, from a compliance perspective, they will need the end-to-end -end analytics capabilities for both revenue accounting and for areas such as ESG and carbon accounting disclosures. Big, big issues no, in this no. industry, John. Yeah, there are. And, and you know, what's interesting is you and I recently uh, had the opportunity to work with a uh, utility group out of the Sacramento area and witness this firsthand as they move into implementing uh, different accounting solutions and particularly thinking about that um, franchising of the um, electronic vehicle charging stations and and provisioning them in the field, but then giving franchises to different organizations in some form of a uh, revenue sharing model, right? Yeah, absolutely. And lots of opportunity and luckily lots of tools in the SAP portfolio uh, that Bramisol can help uh, energy companies in meeting these challenges. Uh, in conclusion, there are so many uh, common threads in the when a companies are and industries are looking at applying the principles of a digital solution economy transformation. Um, these cross industries, uh, various considerations, starting with everyone needs to think about a focus of putting customers in charge. Customers uh, are dictating to to business how they want to be served, how they want to be billed, how they want to interact. And there need to be more options and controls uh, for the consumer, uh, and the com and companies need to be able to uh, be able to handle and support that, and have the agility to do that. John, Absolutely, yeah. John, you know that that means the di the data, and I know this is something you love yeah. talking about these these industries <laughs> face, but the data impacts that they face. Uh, talk yeah. talk to us about that uh, thread. Absolutely, Dave. I mean, this dynamic data and the, the, when you put, talk about putting people in charge and give them options, you know, the data volumes blow up. And what we're seeing is, you know, our customers really need to focus in on the ideas or the concept of really focusing on four different elements. We talk about volume, velocity, density, and complexity. And what do we mean by that? Well, we're looking at, you know, as the data volumes increase, not from the hundreds and the thousands to now the millions and hundreds of millions of transactions. You need to keep that in mind, uh, but just as important as the velocity of those. What's the speed? Um, if you get a million transactions, Dave, in, in a, or a year, that's one thing. If I'm getting a million transactions or a hundred million transactions and they're happening daily, the velocity of those transactions requires the real-time power of things like SAP, S4 HANA, uh, and BRIM to manage that. And then again, you know, density. What do we mean by density? Um, you know, if you think of many of these transactions, um, a lot of them include many different elements involved in it. Um, you can have a corporate purchase that has a uh, hundred different billing items on each transaction with um, corresponding consumption and usage billing associated with it. So they're very dense. You have to break them out, associate them and break them back up, put them back together. And of course, the complexity of the interactions. So when you look at all of these different dimensions, you know, companies need to sit back and, and take a look at that and understand how that affects their um, their infrastructure. Um, you know, the next is, you know, that idea and, and maybe you can talk a little bit about what we're seeing from an end to end integration. What does that imply? And what are you what are we seeing from an end to end integration need? Yeah, absolutely. Well, when you think about all that data, it needs to flow from the front end uh, when the first time you interact with your business or end consumer, all the way through uh, the systems, through compliance and reporting, uh, whether it's to regulatory bodies or the financial markets. Uh, and so that those systems have to um, meet this challenge. And we know integration of, of systems and data has always been a challenge. And as, it, as you increase the complexity of the solutions for consumers, for business, as you increase those all those data elements. And on the other end, you increase the reporting and regulatory requirements because all of those always increase, they never decrease. Uh, integration is critical. Uh, companies like SAP uh, are at their best in the integration world because they're building their systems with integration built in. So when you think about 
the front end uh, systems and, and processes flowing through the brim applications through, through the other sales and uh, accounting processes all the way to the uh, re revenue accounting reporting and other kinds of disclosure reporting that integration is built in but when it's not built in it needs to be addressed and so then you need a platform uh, that also comes within the SAP world uh, that supports uh, where you are going to use other systems uh, you know and obviously in a number of industries there are uh, systems and solutions that are prevalent um, but still uh, need to interact seamlessly with SAP uh, right. and that just drives you know it, but you can't ignore out of all of that what it drives uh, when it comes to the requirements of that integration in, in other topic areas, uh, such as compliance. And maybe I can just address that as uh, for a moment, sure. John, and then we mm -hmm. have to talk yeah. about you know some of the other elements. But you know, compliance is critical. Uh, it, there are governmental bodies driving this. There are whole uh, continents driving this, like the EU, all sorts of requirements that they impose. There's competition between governmental authorities. There's accounting boards. There's uh, all sorts of uh, groups around safety. Uh, and security topics, so it goes on and on, and then a, a massive focus on uh, turning into us into a green world that's uh, supporting our planet. So all the elements around the ESG and carbon accounting that are growing and growing, um, and you got to have a way to track it. it. You're you have to do it. You cannot avoid it, and you have to have a system and a way to do that. And companies, the forward-looking companies, need to find ways to do this in a way that promotes their business and promotes their business success. It's not treated as a burden or just a financial cost, but is used as an engine for eventually what can be um, attractions to investing in their companies, to having consumers want to support them. So there's actually a real positive upside to a proper focus uh, on these compliance-type areas. Absolutely. But, yeah. But how are we going to do that? Because there's a, a lot of issues around being flexible and, and scalable and having the agility to do that, John. Yeah, I mean, you're spot on. I mean, you know, and, and I think it, it goes to some of the points you made in, in the industry, things around the growth of these industries where you see new players evolving every day and how how do these businesses flex and scale? How do they become nimble in the marketplace and agile? Um, and of course, SAP, um, you know, certainly and in, in, in our experience shows, you know, you, you need to be flexible and scalable uh, to do that. Um, SAP can do everything from the smallest all the way up to the world's fortune one or two uh, companies with hundreds and hundreds of millions of transactions uh, daily. Uh, so it's absolutely important that you don't just build for today, but you build uh, for tomorrow. Uh, and I'm going to kind of lean that into some of these implementations. Um, Dave, you know, as you know, you know, will require the integration of agnostic disparate legacy systems. Um, I think you brought out a great point um, around so many as we look at the energy sectors and all of these as we evolve forward um, disparate legacy systems uh, where you have to begin to integrate them. Uh, they, some companies, they're Secret sauce is their or their own proprietary ordering systems uh, and ways of doing things. And of course, we're experts in helping companies integrate those uh, solutions uh, together. But net net, as a CEO, I know you look at this every day. The it's about the long term and 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 talk a little bit about you know what's the long term implications of this. Yeah. Absolutely. When when you're addressing and, and looking at a digital solutions economy approach, regardless of industry that you're in, um, and you think about the long term picture, ultimately, um, survivability, productivity, um, financial success are important and a key element to doing all of that while meeting the challenges that you face that we've referred to around compliance and governmental organizations is you've got to be able to control your data. You've got to know where it originates from and where it flows, know that you can rely on it. And, it, and it's so critical then when you have a single source of the truth type of system or process where you understand the, uh, the full data flow and you can report on it, you can do the analytics. Uh, and then that leads very much into the predictive elements of things so that you can start anticipating uh, changes and, and things that you need to do to meet customer demands, deal with supply chain issues, uh, other elements that uh, we've talked about in this uh, industry series that companies face, uh, all of that, when it comes down to the long term, it's kind of the now and it's the future. Wow, that's absolutely, absolutely spot on. Um, well, Dave, this has been fantastic. I've really enjoyed spending 
uh, this time with you talking about what you've you've shared with us as you observe uh, our business and the companies, the amazing companies that we work with. Uh, thank you for your insights and your time. Absolutely, John, and thank you. And I understand that we can uh, get more information on any of these topics. How do we do that? Well, you can go ahead and scan that QR code that you see here at the bottom of the screen. You can also go check us out on our website at bramasol.com, uh, or we have a fantastic a set of over 250 plus videos that you can choose from different uh, learning streams and different education streams and uh, create your own lists uh, through YouTube. So uh, I encourage everybody to go out there and check out some of the great blogs that Dave's pulled together, as well as some of our other amazing content. So thank you everybody for joining, checking out this content and taking the time out of your day. Um, please feel free to re reach out to either Dave or I directly. Uh, and you can do that uh, through our website. So thank you very much. Thank you, John, and thank you everyone for listening.